Would you stand to your feet tonight? And for just a few short minutes, I want to take you into the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Your hearts are open, and I have been touched today by the presence of God that I have felt from the very beginning of this service. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the spirit that I feel in this place. Amen. The prayers that were lifted up in this place, the praise team and the music is just absolutely phenomenal. Amen. And I compliment you on that tonight. Amen. Book of Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. Excuse me for not announcing that first. Book of Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. We're going to read just three verses of scripture and we're going to jump right into the word tonight. And it says, and he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power and authority over all devils, not over some devils, all devils, every single one of them, every single one of them, amen, amen, even those devils that keep lurking around your house. Maybe some of you need to go home, kick the door in, amen, walk in and say, devil, in the name of Jesus, I've come to tell you, me and my house are going to serve the Lord. Get out of my house. Walk into the bedroom and say, get out of my bedroom in the name of Jesus. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord because the Lord has given me power and authority over you. Amen. I trample you under my feet in the name of Jesus. I declare victory in my home. I declare that my home belongs to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. It's a day to get radical for Jesus. And the Bible says that he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. Gave them power and gave them something to do. Verse 6 says, jump down to verse 6. It says, and they, what? They departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everything. Praise God. I want to preach to you tonight for just a few moments a message entitled Advancing the Kingdom. Praise the Lord. I believe that we are living in days where we need to be doing just that. We need to be advancing the kingdom of God. And there's no better time than in the beginning of a new year to determine in our hearts this year. Because I believe that every single one of us here tonight, I don't believe that there is one of us that doesn't want to do something for I believe that there's, there's every single one of us, down deep inside of us, there is a desire to be used of God in some way, somehow. God's going to show us how we can advance his kingdom. Jesus, we are thankful. We ask you, Lord, to bless thy word tonight. Speak, I pray, to our hearts. And in these few short minutes, give us revelation. Lord, what you want to do through us. In the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Advancing the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Our video team wants to put that on the screen. They can. Matthew 9, 35. It says, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And it says, when he, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no sheep. As I read this verse of scripture, it it kind of comes to, to me as if Jesus did all kinds of traveling and of course we understand that he was he did this on foot went from one village to another 
And the Bible tells us that he healed every sickness and, he, and every disease among the people. And when I get to reading this and to get to looking at it for very closely, when I think about every sickness and I think about every disease, it just is kind of beyond my understanding. Because that's, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of situations. And in every place that he went, I'm sure that there were, there were, there were hundreds that were thronging him and, and, uh, and calling out to him. And, and uh, according to what it says here, Jesus uh, attended to every cry and attended to every voice. And as a man, I just can't physically understand how he did that. Because I'm a man too. And when I've done a lot of ministry, and I've been, a, I've been sitting with people, and I've been counseling, and I've been on the phone, and, I, and, I, and I've had, had people tell me their troubles and their problems, there comes a point. These men know what I'm talking about. There comes a point when you just don't want to talk to anybody. There comes a point where you're just so tired and you're just so weird. But the Bible says that Jesus went about all the cities and all the villages and he was healing every sickness and every disease. Uh, amen. And then he says, and, and I understand it as that he was going from one place to another place. And when he saw a multitude, uh, amen, the Bible said that he was moved with compassion for them. He was not moved with irritability. He was not moved with frustration. Oh, my goodness sakes, another crowd. Oh, my God. But the Bible said that he was moved with compassion. And he reached out to those people and he touched the lives of them. And he healed every sickness and every disease. Amen. I believe, church, that we aren't living in a day where we need to trust God to fulfill all of our what ifs and go beyond amen the call of duty go beyond amen and do break out in faith and do what we've always dreamed of doing amen what if amen we believe God and and and, and what if you fulfill your dreams and what if you were not afraid and what if you you needed healing and you received it amen what would you do hallelujah what would you do if you believed in your yourself and you partnered with an amazing God amen what could happen amen if you had a passion for God and could learn to live out that passion if there is anything that we should do in 2016 it must it must be to somehow some way advance the kingdom Because we're here because God chose us. We're here because God handpicked us. We're here because God pulled us out of the miry clay. God, God, we're here because God had mercy on us and, and brought us into this place. Amen. Amen. That we would sit here in this place, but not that we would only sit uh, and, and enjoy a comfortable seat and enjoy the presence of God and enjoy the awesome singing and preaching of God's word, but that we would be able ministers, uh, that we would go forth by the power of his might. Uh, amen. And that we would uh, advance uh, outside of this place that we would advance the kingdom of God. I asked a question today and I jumped forward here today. I could go into so many different ways here, but I jumped forward today and I, I, I believe that we need to ask the question, what do we do? What do we need to do to advance the kingdom of God? I believe that there are three things that we need to First of them is there needs to be a change of perception. We need to understand that we are God's people. We need to understand that we are empowered by His Spirit. We need to understand that we have taken upon our lives His name. We need to understand that we no longer belong to the kingdom of 
darkness. We belong to the kingdom of light. We find the kingdom of dark and the, of darkness advancing its kingdom. We find in our world today so many fronts where they are endeavoring to push their agendas. Amen. It doesn't matter. They're bulldozing their agendas right over us. Come on, church. Can I have a witness tonight? Amen. They're advancing their kingdom. Why? Because they, 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 because they belong to a kingdom. Amen. And they've got an agenda. They are focused. They are advancing their kingdom. Amen. But what about God's people? Amen. Uh, I find God's many God's, God's people just kind of just kind of sitting around. Uh, amen. It's not a day to be just sitting around. Uh, it is a day for us to advance uh, the kingdom of God. And it starts with a change of perception. Who am I? I'm God's child. Paul put it in this light. He said, know ye not that the unrighteous, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, infeminate, abusers of themselves, of mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Then he says, and such were some of you. But, Thank God for that change of perception. Ha <laughs> ha! But ye been washed, ye been sanctum sanctified, ye been justified by the Spirit of our God. Oh, there is something in my past that brought about a change. For me, it happened when I, back in 1969, when I was only seven years old, and my uncle kneeled by my bed and said, Michael, you need to give your life to Jesus. And I said, oh, Uncle Tim, I'm going to wait till I'm 18. And he said, no, son, you cannot wait till you're 18. It's got to be today because now is the day of opportunity. Now is the day of salvation. And I began to pray with my uncle and I raise my little hands and I begin to feel the presence of God and God begin to move on me and then tears begin to stream down my face I was laying in my bed and then my tears wet my pillow and then the window was open it was blowing the curtain in my face I could feel the breath of God upon me and on that day I received the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues and the Spirit gave me the utterance to speak Oh, I'm talking about a change of perception. Our problem, church, is that we are, we continue to deal with this flesh. And so we allow ourselves to become intimidated. We allow ourselves to be intimidated by the flesh that rises up with us and demands to have its voice. How important it is for us to quench that voice. I remember traveling with my mother and father. My mother and father gave 42 years of missionary service to the country of Brazil. I was raised in the country of Brazil as a boy. In 1979, we came to the United States for deputation. And back then, it was a big thing to have a CB radio. My dad's handle was Pack Rat. Mine was Roadrunner. 
And my brother, his was rubber duck. Look at that. But I remember that on that CB radio, you could adjust the squelch. Come on. I'm talking about that voice of the flesh that seems to rise up every once in a while. You know what we got to do? We got to reach over there with the hand of the Spirit. And we got to adjust the squelch. Amen. To tone that down and tune it out. Amen. And surrender our lives to the Lord. Can you say amen, church? Amen. The voice of that of the flesh can't have way in our life. We need to tune it out. about a change of perception. Apostle Peter writing to the Christian church seemed to be dealing with the same thing towards the end of his days. This is several years after Pentecost. A couple of decades. Peter's writing to the Christian church and he writes to them and he says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, he was seeing a trend. He was seeing a trend. He was seeing things happen, amen, that did not please him. He was seeing people becoming comfortable, amen, maybe, uh, maybe apostatizing a little bit. And he said, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who at one time amen which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God he writes and says in verse 10 amen which uh, which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained first thing that we need to do is have change of perception. To understand that we are God's people. We are God's man. You see, God has called me into the country of Uruguay. I had the privilege of driving over the Sunshine Skyway to them. Beautiful. Tampa, St. Petersburg, beautiful cities. But I was not called to this place. But God, nevertheless, has chosen the people. You see, God's ways are awesome. Amen. He chose, he chooses. The Bible tells us in the book of, of Corinthians chapter 1. Amen. It tells us uh, in verse 23, I believe it is, but... Uh, he said, verse 24, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, uh, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God, but the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. But see your calling, brethren, not that many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish uh, to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, the base things, verse 28, and things that are despised hath God chosen and things which are not to bring to not things that are that no flesh would glory change of perception not only do we need to change of perception we also need a willingness to obey see we need a change of perception it's not enough. I also need a willingness to obey. In Luke chapter 1, we find Mary hearing the voice of God. The voice of God comes to her through an angel by the name of Gabriel. Gabriel stops by Mary's house and says to her, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. I've come to tell somebody here tonight. You have struggled with your low self-esteem. But God tells you tonight that you are highly favored of God. 
I've come to tell somebody that you need to put your past to rest. You need to look to the Lord, the author and the finisher of your faith. When she saw him, verse 29, she was troubled at his saying, he cast in her mind, what man of salutation should this be? And the angel said unto her, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There shall be no end. Mary, wow. Too much for Mary. She says, how shall this be? Knowing I know not a man. You see, it just went right over her head. The angel says to her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, thou, thou, therefore that also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary still cannot comprehend. But nevertheless, here is her response. Verse 38, she says, Behold the handmaid. Be it unto me according to thy word. You see, I don't understand, and I've gotten kind of weary of hearing people tell me as I've ministered, oh, Brother Walman, you know, I just don't really fully comprehend what God has for me. Mary did not comprehend what God had for her. When I was a younger minister, I did not fully comprehend what God had for me. But I just took it one day at a time. And Mary, took, Mary was willing to take it one day at a time. And she said, Lord, here is your servant. And then not only should there be a change of perception, but there needs to be a willingness to obey. I believe I am speaking to somebody here tonight, amen, that needs to say yes to the Lord. You have held the Lord at bay. You have delayed his will in your life, but today is the day when you will step into this altar and you will say, God, here is my life. I've come to say yes. I've come to say, Lord, I have a willingness to obey what you want to do through me. Not only should there be a willingness to obey, not should there only be a, per a change of perception, there must be an undying love for our neighbor. This is exemplified by the story of the Good Samaritan. And for sake of time, let me just mention to you what happened. A man leaving Jerusalem goes to Jericho, going to Jericho, falls among thieves and is stripped of everything he has and is left half dead. There comes a priest. And when he, the Bible says that when he sees the man at that place, he passes on the other side. In other words, he had to turn away from him. And there was a Levite. When he came to that place, seeing the man, he turned away from him and passed on the other side. There came a Samaritan. You see, Jesus was speaking of himself. Because Jesus is that good Samaritan. Rejected by many hated by many nevertheless having been hurt having been rejected this man felt compassion and he gets off of his horse and he takes the man into his arms and he pours into his wounds his wine his oil he takes the man and he puts him on his beast and he takes him to an inn and he spends some time there caring for the man that the man would recover his strength. He pays the innkeeper money so that the innkeeper and whoever would also continue to care for the man as he goes on his way. He had been moved with compassion. It didn't bother him to dirty his hands and, and clothes the wounds of the man. It didn't bother him to use his oil and wine. 
or to walk while he put the hurting man on his beast. It didn't bother him to pay his stay at the inn or the time it took to look after him. It didn't bother him to cover the expenses of the injured that was left in the care of the innkeeper. He had been moved with compassion. I'm talking to you tonight about advancing the kingdom of God. It starts in our home. It starts with the Lord opening our eyes. It starts with us asking God to show us, to give us the perception that he has. That we would see the need. You know what? We need to see the need. Because when we see the need, maybe we will have the same reaction that Jesus had. That when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Would you stand to your feet? As our musicians would come quickly, please. I want to just read to you a song that is being sung on the Christian radio stations. And I close with this. It's a song sung by Matthew West. The title of the song is Do Something. I woke up this morning and I saw a world full of trouble now. I thought, how'd we ever get so far down? How's, how's it ever going to turn around? I turned my eyes to heaven and I thought, God, why don't you do something? That's easy. I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty and children sold, sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me, the song says. So I shook my fist at heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. Matthew West sings, if not us, then who? If not me and you. Right now it's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? We see an end to all this pain. It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet. But it's easier to say than to be live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves it's all right. Somebody else will do something. But I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of a life with no desire. I don't want a flame. I want a fire. I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to do something. If there's anything I would like for you to do today in response to this message that I've preached, you would come in at this altar and that you would say, God, I want to do something. It may be a Bible study. It may be a prayer service in my home. It may be, it may be a prayer walk. But Lord, somehow I'm going to do something. I'm going to offer my hands. I'm going to offer my feet. I'm going to give my eyes. I'm going to give my lips. I'm going to give myself. God is going to do something. Because when we offer ourselves to God, He begins to do something. He's going to open a door, He's going to do a miracle, He's going to save a soul. He's going to deliver the oppressed. Because as it says in the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus reading the scriptures. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the God, the deliverance to the captives, the recovering of the sight of the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 
would I propose today, church, that this be the acceptable year. That this be the acceptable year. As we advance the kingdom of God, that it would be acceptable to the Lord. That we would proclaim this to be the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus, I, I want to I wanna be a true worshiper. Take my hands. Take my feet. Use me, Lord. Lord, I have a willingness to obey. Give me a, help me to have a change of perception. Help me to have an undying love for my neighbor, for them that are close to me within my circle of influence. Let me touch them with your power. Let me touch them with your light. Praise God. Praise God. Lift your hands. Worship the Lord. You can use me. Yes, Lord, you can use me tonight. You can, you can use, use anything, me. Lord. You can use me. You can use anything. You can use me, Lord. Use me tonight, Jesus. Take my hands, Lord. Take use me tonight, my feet. Jesus. 